आई वी एम हाई आई एम जरीना पूनावाला योर पीक परफॉर्मेंस कोच लाइफ कोच इमोशनल इंटेलिजेंस प्रैक्टिशनर एंड एन एल पी प्रैक्टिशनर आई एम ऑल्सो द फाउंडर ऑफ एप्सो एक्सपर्टीज यूनिक and my organization constantly aims at building leaders across continents after having worked with so many dynamic business honchos entrepreneurs startups ceos management gurus parents and student communities worldwide i am convinced that every individual has unleashed potential and all we really need to do is realize it watch the magic unfold enhance quality of life relationships and professions On my show be ready for some riveting conversations with inspirational people snippets stories and much more so here i am on this exceptional journey to find empowerment and inspiration anywhere i can come join me on this breathtaking path of self realization potential maximization positivity and most of all embrace your inner power you are on your way to empowering yourselves Welcome to the empowering series with Zarina Punawala. On today's episode I'm in conversation with a founder and creator of an elegant and luxurious brand, a powerful woman who is not only thoughtful and deeply rooted in our Indian ethos but also thrives on conscious sustainability in fashion. Please welcome Anavela Mishra. Hi Anavela. Hello Zarina. How are you? All well. I hope I've uh, pronounced your name completely correctly. Completely, yes. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So, how have you been, and how have the past few months been for you? Uh, so, the past few months have been uh, full of ups and downs in terms of you know um, uncertainty and uh, lack of clarity at times. But you know, initial few weeks were a little difficult when we were all trying to find our. hold and trying to understand the whole situation uh, but gradually i think we especially i i i think i um, kind of understood um that this was a time to pause and that's how i've been treating uh you know ever since uh, april that's how i've been treating this time uh, pausing and actually relooking at what i've been doing and where i need to go forward from here That's really nice. You know when you use the word pause Anavela I think it kind of reflects on a lot of things and a lot of people have had to stop and pause and reflect and introspect and start thinking about a lot of things. So what are those things that you have been putting your mind to? So see work wise for us most of our work is in rural clusters. Mm-hmm. Um most of our artisans work from home. so it was not a big deterrent there because it went on the way it was we had already uh, sent fabrics yarns things were in place in movement and it kept on you know they kept on working the way it was planned so i don't think we took a major you know kind of uh, back foot there mm-hmm. but uh, when it comes to my personal life in terms of how i spend my day you know how much time do i take out for my own self and what is the pace of my life i think those were the uh, places where i need to reconsider a lot of things when you're in a big city and you're running a business you're a full time mom also my husband was stranded outside of the country for a very long time so there was a different kind of a pace to my life which was unnecessary having you know now been sitting and doing work from home um going to office as and when required um coordinating things you understand that there can be an alternate way which is first healthy more mindful and has a lot of time uh, you know you, you as a person have a lot of time at hand so all of these things have come into play in my mind and the way i've kind of started looking at my own everyday routine mhm and that really changes the way we've been perceiving our life and things around us right over a couple of years and you had such an astounding journey i've also read a couple of articles about you there was something that uh, the title was the rise of uh, anavela mishra and it was really interesting i just liked the whole feeling you know of that article was it an l interview 
Yes, yes, yes. It was an L interview. That's correct. So I read. I just saw the title, and I just you know was absolutely awestruck with just the the strengths and the power and the rise of a novella. So I'd love to know about that journey and that you know rise and that fall and the struggles and the successes that you had. It would be lovely if you share. So Zarina, you know, ever since I did my post graduation, which was in design, and before mm-hmm. that, my graduation was. Uh, in business management so i uh, graduated with finance as my major um uh, but then i understood that my calling was design and ever since i was a child i was very very inclined towards uh, appreciation of uh, finer things in terms of color combinations in terms of material in terms of textures uh, how to place them together and just all stuck with nature all the time it still is there you know there's so many times when i'm having discussion with my siblings my sister and my brother and talking about you know certain landscapes and trees and birds and flowers and they were like where were we when you were looking at all of this <laughs> so i think there has been a constant constant relationship with nature and in ways to kind of uh, manifest in in what i can create and that had to be uh, my journey which i discovered only uh, when i chose what i wanted to do as my post graduation subject also coming from a background of a completely you know a family which was completely rooted into studies my father is a scientist my mother is a you know b m a b a d and uh, into literature i think for them also to understand that this child and that that point of time uh, when mm-hmm. i was growing up i was born in 1976 so you know you can understand it was a huge and in our community where we lived in a uh, in a campus all the girls were you know dreaming of becoming a doctor and boys mostly engineer and i was a black sheep who was <laughs> who was thinking of design and also you know not in a metro so not in a delhi or a bombay which mm. had a design school had a, a you know uh, exposure to fashion magazines or brands so to say karnal is a small town and uh, you know we were not exposed to all of this but then still i had this whole inclination and my parents did support me very very much so from there you know pursuing design and then a couple of corporate jobs which were mostly as a menswear designer then getting into a project which was combination of a social enterprise so i was working with a ministry of rural development and ministry of textiles a nift got this project from ministry of rural development they were looking for somebody to lead it uh, and they were looking from some, for somebody from the industry because then you know they knew there was a government project with government aid but they wanted it in a certain kind of a discipline which could lead to final outcome which was more like a brand which was more like a more organized programmed outcome rather than you know sometimes when we work on an aid it all becomes more you know as if you're helping and not constructing or building something so they were looking for somebody from uh, the business arena to come and lead the project in the same you know same way as if it was a business uh, unit rather than a social enterprise so it was a mixture of a social plus a business enterprise and it in those three years kind of i think laid a foundation to whatever i am doing now because i got to travel through the length and breadth of a country uh, move into rural clusters actually understood uh, what weaving was uh, all about what a loom looked like because my uh, post graduation was in knitwear design so i was i am not a textile designer by my training mm-hmm. uh, and everything i learned was on ground with the artisans with the weavers and once you're exposed and there is you know you understand oh my god this is what i'm missing unless and until you've seen it experienced it it can only be you know you don't know but once i was traveling and i was i spent more and more time with these weavers and artisans it it kind of you know clarified a lot of things for me uh the beauty of things which are created by hand uh, have a huge heritage behind them uh, are done uh, you know created by skilled artisans and there was i thought there was a huge gap between what was happening in the cities and what was getting produced in the villages and rural artisans at that point of t- time i'm talking about you know around 14 years ago right when i was working on this project 
and it seemed like you know it was just a little handhold a little nudge a little you know um, a collaboration which was required um, uh, between um, entrepreneurs or us who are curating products and the artisans who are at it making them to be able to just fine tune those products to be easily used in the cities and the modern markets in the places where you know we understand the consumption pattern and the consumption actually takes place otherwise it's a product which finds its place in a village heart you know and how much consumption happens there or in a craft market so you will buy one beautiful product and that's the end of it how do you make it into a utility and every day uh, you know create different products using the same skill which can find their way into our everyday lives so i think that was an eye opener for me and uh, once the project was finished uh, my son was born and i was completely into taking care of him i moved to mumbai from delhi then we moved to singapore for 2 3 years and that was a complete sabbatical for me with my child once he was 5 years old is when i started putting my you know pieces of my work together and started to kind of define what i wanted to do um, going forward and because of those 5 years behind me where i had done a lot of thinking Uh, i think it was easy for me to understand where i wanted to go from there and uh, 2011 end is when i started my experimentation with linen and after that there was no looking back because i think there was uh, so much that i wanted to do and create uh, that from there it was only a journey onwards that's really beautiful in terms of the entire graph you know if you look at it from actually going backward into the whole rural sector and figuring things out getting clarity and then moving forward and of course in your personal journey also uh, you know embarking on motherhood at the same time i'm pretty sure that clarity at the same time there must have been a lot of excitement to pursue and get back and you know do what you're so passionate about and having a niche anavela i think that is something that most people can't for a very long time in their lives so you started off with your niche right if you seeing linen in uh, general when you're talking about linen we're also talking about something that very often i'm hearing these days is sustainable fashion which i'm guessing you probably got into much earlier in time so zarina for me the whole premise of the brand was based on artisans on things which were made by hand on natural textiles so it was not a planned uh, you know at that point of time thought of you know that this is what i want to do but mm. it just happened because uh, if you see you know our villages work on a, a premise of sustainability they right. work with material um, artisans work with material which is around them in their environment the resources which they have you know the crops which they grow or the materials which are easily available for example in uh, pulia where i work around that region there is a lot of jute you mm. know that that happens naturally and then you know they are making a uh, different kind of bags so they are always deriving things from their you know natural resources and when you start working in that kind of landscape it automatically comes into what you are trying to create as well uh, so it was not a very conscious decision of saying that i want to create i want to use this word sustainability but that was all we could do and that was all we wanted to do so it it was the only way to work you know and now it's you know um, the word is in fashion and trend and and i'm happy that it is in trend because we need to uh, in a lot of ways relook at the way we've been you know uh, leading and doing things so yeah. for me it was the natural progression of how i wanted to do my work right and you think that the current scenario and the you know change in market which is possible because of the pandemic and even otherwise you know you or we've already gone through this entire series of conversations with people and around the globe about global warming and what not and now the pandemic has hit us what do you think is the future in terms of that kind of fashion because you're right you may not have intentfully looked into it as sustainable fashion but now it's becoming something that people are consciously getting into right so what do you think is the you know change in market and how do you reckon the future is going to look uh see i think a very important part of this whole journey through the pandemic and trying to understand 
the very important part is you know getting back to the rhythm of nature you know we we created excess we consumed in excess uh, we were in rush you know the whole production cycles were rushed mm-hmm. uh, and uh, sitting here at home for four months you understood that that rush was uh, unnecessary i think a lot of people have understood that and then hence you're relooking at the way you want to work you know and if we can get back into the rhythm of nature you know create less but create beautiful more mindfully the consumption pattern can be changed in a way that you know if i was buying 20 garments in a season you know 20 new garments in a season do i need those 20 uh, new garments or do i want to actually enjoy five beautiful products made with all love taking that time and will last me a little longer you know a little longer i'm saying but a lot longer you know because they've been made mindfully because the textile used are uh, you know beautiful are uh, made by hand all the techniques are done mindfully slowly and they're not rushed so i think we are going to go into that kind of a space in a major way having said that there is huge set of business in terms of fast fashion in terms of brands who have been you know working on this whole premise of you know this is this season and suddenly 6 months later it's not in fashion anymore so right. it will take some time for them to adjust to a kind of and i'm sure they're all rethinking their own uh, business strategy and the way they work but it'll take them some time because it's the the numbers are so huge for them uh, but slowly uh, you know we've seen big huge companies who used to work in terms of uh, this season now and you know out of season in 6 months talking a different language talking a language of giving more uh, value to what they create and uh, you know relooking at their uh, range architecture and talking to consumers in a more uh, mindful way so it, this is going to come you know for us uh, brands who have been working on this or for smaller brands uh, home grown businesses it will be a little easier the transition uh, for companies who have stores all over the world are into multi uh, uh countries multi agreements with you know franchises and all it will take them some time to re- reorient their business to this new world we are going to enter uh, you know post the pandemic right that is quite exquisitely expressed i must say because it already makes me feel like buying those five garments and <laughs> so that i can sustain and use them beautifully instead of just going and splurging unnecessarily so yeah thank you for that um and now I, i think you it, look, uh, correct me if i'm wrong but you do hail from haryana right so i was born and brought up in karnal karnal uh, it is yes it is a small town in haryana Mm-hmm. and you were born and raised in a small town and then there was this transition for you to the big city i'm i'm very curious to know uh, how does one deal with this kind of a transition because you know when you look at the the newer generation around sometimes i think they are very attracted to the fame or the glamour that comes with a certain industry or profession and they're not kind of uh, analyzing or contemplating what are the pros and cons and how they need to sort of take things forward so how was your transition and what is the advice you'd like to give to the people around you so you know i uh, when i moved out of karnal like when i moved to delhi so both my graduation and post graduation were in delhi mm-hmm. uh, so when i moved for my graduation which was business studies you know it was more of a uh, you know i had to a uh, kind of uh, it was a college it was a new setup for me altogether but it was something which was more uh, academic uh, you know so i just deep dived into my books uh, my environment didn't affect me so much after my college i used to be mostly found in the library i completely uh, you know got into the studies the academic side of it to understand business getting into finance doing case studies meeting more and more people from uh, the business point of view like i did a project on britannia i did a project on bharatiya cutler hammer it was it's a switch gear company so understanding industrial relations so it was a huge it was a very busy time it was i had to learn a lot you know here i was you know my 12th standard i had taken both maths and science so from there to completely come into the other side 
of it where you are needed to understand economics, um, finance, um, marketing. So there was so much to learn and so much to do. So I didn't uh, so much understood the transition for myself because I was mostly into my space of uh, academics. But when I moved to NIFT, which was three years later, and I was already used to uh, living in Delhi, still it was a big, big change for me. Because um, at that point of time, uh, I graduate post graduate. Uh, I graduated out of NIFT in the year two thousand, mm-hmm. twenty years ago. Okay, so I got into NIFT in ninety eight. I remember this is a memory I cannot forget. Okay. So I remember my father had gone to drop me to Delhi to 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 the college. Uh, my hostel was in Parparganj. We didn't only the postgraduate, uh, the second year students got uh, girls got their uh, rooms in the college space, and we our hostel was in the outskirts Parparganj. So my father came with me, and I had to fill a few forms. Uh, and we have a foyer uh, in Nift Delhi. Uh, so it was an afternoon. The college was obviously shut. New admissions were happening. There was a huge lot of seniors, you know, sitting in that foyer, and uh, you know, very casually sitting, uh, you know, um, chatting with each other. And uh, I think they were smoking as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's nothing. You, my father smokes. There's nothing uh, bad about. I'm not. But it was such a. Um, I got a little overwhelmed. Right. With the whole, uh, that setup. And I was, and I think my father kind of sensed it. Mm-hmm. And he hails from a village, you know, he came from a uh, agriculture family. He hails from a village. He came into town, he studied and he, so he sensed that uh, 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 little, you know, uh, yes. my, yes, consciousness and my whole behavior. And we were sitting in the canteen after that. And um, again, a very casual uh, atmosphere in the ca- canteen. And he looked at me and we were having tea and he said, you are here for a purpose. And you've come here to fulfill your dreams. Don't get, you know, unnerved by what you see around you. You see what you have to learn here, you know. And he kind of, you know, took me into that conversation. He said, you, you know, with your upbringing, with what you are made of, your foundation, you have to be strong and understand how you want to deal with this environment. And I think it was also the first day. So I was, you know, very skeptical on a lot of things. And I think his whole um, confidence in me of dealing in this new environment, which I was throwing myself into hmm. uh, and telling me that this is something you've come to learn and you have to open yourself and it's all right. You know, uh, you have to experience all kinds of lifestyles and, understand how it I think it was a it, that memory will always stay with me and that confidence he showed in me and how he pushed me he actually pushed me into it and he left and I had to deal with you know mm-hmm. my new surroundings um, so I would just say that you know when we looking at design or when we are looking at any other art form where you become more a part of a public imagery uh, mm-hmm. which is talked about, which is showcased in a way. There's a lot of glamour attached to it. Uh, so we see the finished product. We see the finished product. We see the uh, glamour part of it. You see, you go and watch a fashion week. But there is so much hard work. I'm telling you, there's so much hard work. The first stage is to create your own identity. With so much, uh, you know, noise all around you, fashion, which looks like a very glamorous part and everybody wants a part of it. It's very important to have to create your own language, to create your own identity. And it takes years. It doesn't come in a day. You don't um, get uh, impacted or mesmerized with a fashion. We can say, I want to be a designer. Also, because you like dressing up or you like garments or you like wearing beautiful clothes. That's one part of it. To understand the uh, fine you know, areas of design, of how fit works, of how function comes into your design, of how textile is so important, of how it has to fall in a certain way. What happens when you choose a certain yarn over another yarn? What happens when you mix two yarns? There's a huge, huge learning there. And I'm still learning 20 years into fashion. And 
around eight to nine years into my brand, I'm still learning every day. When I go on to a room with my viewers, I'm a student. I just stand behind and learn. And, you know, I give my ideas of presentation of how I want the finished product. But when it comes to the skill of handling a loom, they are masters. Right. Here I would like to also bring, because we have touched upon this whole point of what all goes into a journey. I want to bring about an experience, which was, Mm -hmm. Rudra was not born. So my son was not born and I was working with this NIFT project. And we had to conduct a workshop uh, with woodwork artisans in Pilakhua. Right. Uh, Sardar Hussain and his son. So uh, it's a family of wood block makers in Pilakhua. And Arshad is his son. So we had gone there to understand how they work. And I was with another designer who was a specialist in wood craft, Mr. Bala Subramaniam. Both of us went and understood the space how they work and we had to create contemporary products using their craft because Pilakwa doesn't have block printing so much now but it has a huge setup of artisans who work on block carving so using their skill set to create products which can find you know alternate uses in the household and that was what the workshop was about so just listening to Mr. Uh, Sadar Hussain and just going through his journey And because we were so passionately listening to him and looking at his drawings and beautiful tree of lives he had made over time, you know, he understood that sense of uh, excitement and he took out old files, Mm -hmm. which was the work of his father. And Zarina, I was completely pleasantly shocked looking at that work because it was looking like a work from this time, from our time. And it was around 50 to 60 years old. And then I said, Sadar Hussain, how come so contemporary? Like he had mixed modern graphics, geometrics with animal prints, with florals. It was something else. It opened up a whole, you know, a petara of work, which looked like, you know, amalgamation of so many styles. And uh, so I said, how come, how did he do all of this? How did he, what was he exposed to, to be able to think like this? And uh, Sadar Hussain smiled at me and he was like, you know, when he was learning and when I was learning from him for uh, when we moved into the workshops, he started very young. So he must be 10 years when he said that, you know, he moved into the workshop. He said for the first seven years, I was only made to do mundane work. So, you know, I had to clean the workshop before everybody else entered there. I had to see that the tools are properly cleaned and put in their place. I had to, you know, all of that. Uh, and never allowed to touch anything. He said, I observed them for seven years and I understood, of course, he understood when you should cut the wood, how it has to be, at what, you know, how uh, should the moisture be there, moisture not be there, uh, when you do the metal work on it, how should it be readied for it. Uh, So all of that. And he said that I was so ready that once one day when my father said that, come, you start today, he said, I did not sleep, I did not stop. And you see that in his work. So I think that whole, uh, the whole practice of apprenticeship, of learning through a mentor, going through that whole rigorous training of learning and then to be told to, you know, take a certain direction, to hone your craft, to give your time, to actually practice it as a passion. That's something which makes you into a complete uh, work package but you know we we miss that now in today's time there's so much hurry there's so much there's such a fast pace to everything uh you know with social media with with the uh, uh you've got an opportunity to uh bring about your work to thousands and lakhs of people at one click of a button you know you put a design and so many people will see it but what you're doing is that you're you know those mediums are pushing that design or that particular product onto so many people and you compare it with when you go to a gallery you've taken out time your own time to plan that okay i'm going to go and now today experience or put myself through a whole experience of this particular work there's a lot of difference in mindfully creating something and being able to hold a person's attention in a setup which is like a gallery where a person is taking out time to see your work to 
pushing your work into an environment where hundreds and hundreds of people are there but then also there are hundreds and hundreds of designs and it's 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 a transient medium so mm-hmm. today you are there tomorrow you're not there and i feel there is a huge need of going back to that whole system of mentorship of actually spending time with your craft of honing your skills you know being good at what you do and then make a presentation i think that's very very important and to be a student you know of your craft all your life mm-hmm. i think that's very important as well so i think that whole uh, thinking of feeling because we you know this generation is exposed to so many things parents have made sure you know even me that our kids have everything they need around you know and that i think brings in a sense of entitlement in a lot of ways of uh, you know and google you know teaches you everything so you go and you search and you learn a little music you know how to play a guitar when you're learning through google but is somebody talking back to you and mentoring you and telling you no here you little note where you went wrong and this is how you need to correct it so we learn in a day you know we are ready to also <laughs> present in a day and somehow lose the whole charm of perfecting and becoming a perfectionist in something we do so i think that's what we need to bring back that's also one thing you know when we are talking about slow fashion and we are talking about sustainability we are talking about rhythm of life i think that's this is something which i would really like to see coming into a relationship of a mentor and a student and apprentice and how we learn i think that's a way that's a place where we need to put a little more thought that's so true and honestly that's so much learning in this little question that i asked you and the kind of learnings you've given us you know that so many takeaways one of them is definitely the fact that your father is a very uh, sage person and i think he gave you the best advice you could have had <laughs> at the time uh, definitely another would be the fact that you're so so correct about how we can actually learn in a day but there's a lot of experience and a lot of storytelling when it comes to mentorship and coaching which can really change the way uh, you perceive a lot of things and change your experiences so for example this the whole woodwork artisan uh, story that you shared the fact that you know somebody is constantly doing something so mundane for 7 years but is still so passionate and so uh, there's this fire in your belly and when you get that that opportunity you're going to grab it with everything you have and probably that's what happened yes right that's such amazing things such great takeaways for us uh, anavala from this aspect you know i really feel that mentorship is missing and do you personally think that maybe a level of patience or a level of entitlement has come by in the recent times where there is no patience everybody wants to make things work so fast like you mentioned that they don't want to spend the time in probably honing that craft and you know mastering their skills as much as one would in earlier times i agree with you sarina i find that i also go to lift uh, for juries uh, you know lift mumbai uh, talk to students i think students are you know the youngsters even my son he's going to be 14 this year there's so much to learn from them in terms of the way they you know kind of navigate through technology he just finds you know like right now i'm was setting up for this call and he was he just knew what to do you know and i was taking my time to you know anything new you give into you their hands to in terms of technology they navigate themselves very easily uh, to travel across the world and to be a part of uh, this huge uh, you know urban world and to be able to have a conversation with anybody and everybody so there are a lot of things which one needs to learn from the youngsters but i think also having said that patience and perseverance of you know of sticking to one thing to understand to taking that time to make your choice not jumping from you know today i found i want to play guitar tomorrow i want to be a photographer the day after i want to create music of my own and the fourth day i want to be a cricketer because we are exposed and our parents can you know kind of uh, put us into that training and you know let us try so there is this whole rush in and out in and out in and out to give yourself completely if you take any success story be it such in you know uh, be it dhoni you look at their life stories you look at what they have done how they have come from where they have come where what they have achieved these are two sports person you know 
Milka Singh, what have they put? They've put their whole life into one craft and they've just mastered it. Um, I was reading about this swimmer. See, I'm not getting this name. And, you know, he was swimming and a new guy who had kind of, uh, you know, broken his record was looking at him and there were people just looking at that swimmer for the art of it. It looked like he was a fish when he was swimming. So that's the kind of passion you put into your craft that you become your craft, you know. Do we have, are we creating people like that? And I also feel that, you know, there are places where if you see these success stories, they've happened with people who were lacking with resources, people who were, uh, you know, highly, you know, motivated, wanting to make a difference, but didn't have the exposure or the uh, resources to do it. And they push themselves and they find the right break and they, you know, shown, uh, you know, in their respective areas. So, you know, there I feel that, you know, maybe the whole entitlement and being surrounded by uh, everything you want in your life, somehow maybe it's a deterrent in your complete growth as a human being. So as parents, it's a huge learning for us to how we want to motivate, how we want to channelize, how we want to navigate our kids through this whole very resourceful um, surroundings they're sitting in. Mm -hmm. That is completely correct. Maybe, you know, the pros and cons of the situation really with uh, the generation, in my opinion, is the fact that, yes, patience is missing, but at the same time, they have a lot of curiosity. Mm. And although they are, you know, questions that, maybe earlier generations didn't ask and didn't get answers for they get answers much faster and which is great in a way because that also increases your horizon and broadens your perspective on many yes yes all its pros and cons definitely but i do believe that there is this level of patience you require if you want to master your art and of course you're absolutely correct maybe a good amount of mentorship and a nice synergy with uh, you know perseverance would really really go a long way for even even in today's times It doesn't change. That doesn't change for anybody, I'm guessing. Yes. Right. Uh, You mentioned your son a couple of times. So I am off to ask you this question. How do you manage with a teen? (laughs) And how do you communicate? Make sure that there is no communication gap with your teenager. And how are you managing your, um, you know, the personal and professional space? Uh, So Zarina, for me, um, you know, so my husband um, uh, lived away in Vietnam for four years because of his work and job. Now he's back. So those four years were quite a testing time for me in terms of balancing. Also, that was a time when my brand was also growing. I opened the store during that time. So my store is going to be four years this, this year. So that's also, you know, when you opened a new store, a retail outlet, that's a new kind of uh, uh, area altogether to understand retail, how it functions, you know, being a designer to create your uh, collections and then Rudra growing up. So then uh, I made a decision that he used to come back at four from school and I would wind up my work in office at four and be back. So for all practical reasons or for all practical, uh, you know, uh, he was going to school uh, when his mother was home. He was coming back from school when the mother was home. Of course, I will find some gaps of time, some period, you know, some small uh, periods of time in the house where I wanted to do my work. But I was mostly a house a wife, a mother who was at home and, you know, looking after him in these four years also. So I've tried to balance it out like that. We communicate a lot. I go cycling with him. I try to do a lot of things with him. We'll play badminton. If he's playing cricket, I'll, you know, find a way to be a part of his uh, thing and uh, listen to him. Actually, it's very op- it's very important to be listening to your kids because they have so much to say. And if you've snubbed them once and if, you, if they see you busy in some, I think it's the whole idea is to keep the channel of communication always open. And also being a single child, you know, he doesn't have a sibling to bond with at home. So mm-hmm. having all of that, I have kind of worked really hard uh, to have an open communication with him, to be a part of, you know, his uh, friend circle, to understand, you know, what he likes, what he doesn't, to make him a part of my work, to un- to make him understand what I am going through, you know, the challenges I go through. There, there are times when I might be feeling really down to share it with him that this is what has happened you know it's and there's no harm in crying in front of your kids so he's seen me he's seen me uh, uh, 
really down sometimes he's seen me you know kind of facing a challenge uh, addressing a certain issue um, and so he understands my uh, struggles also which brings in you know a kind of uh, understanding and a kind of appreciation uh, empathy for, for the other person so i think that's the kind of bond both of us share and i try to learn his technology you know uh, uh, part of it as well what you've been doing with your son i think is something every parent should really focus on doing because you are allowing you know your uh, your son to see a vulnerable side of you and actually understand emotions and in today's day and age it's important to embrace that kind of vulnerability and it, i think you're doing a fantastic job with that you know zaina it's important because you know sometimes what you do is you think like you know for example i would say in my father you know right. my father and my mother both of them very strong personalities my mother coming from very different backgrounds uh, my father has always been one strong rock you know and we always look at him like that and my mother she shows her vulnerability we understand you know so she there is a mix of both the emotions for and i have understood that uh, you know when you look at a very strong um, parent you feel that you know okay he has never made mistakes he has never felt you know um, challenged or he is not you know he is in control always then that's what you want to become or try to become or uh, you know imitate and it's very difficult so we are putting uh, you know in a way wrong example in front of our child yeah. it's it's it is very important to tell him it's okay to cry it's okay to fail it's okay it's all right you know you fail and you put yourself together and you try again if we only show him uh, that we've always done well and we are at top of things and everything is under control how will he accept failures how will he accept things when they are not in his control so we are kind of creating a person who who is vulnerable then and but he'll not be able to share it with anybody that's true that's absolutely true and very well said i'm guessing that's great piece of advice for parents out there also parenting is a is a very challenging job it's a it's a human's life in your hands you know you have you're you're shaping somebody so i think it it needs all your attention it's as as important as you know when you're crafting a product or you're crafting something new with your hands it's the same way like you know they say guru kumhar shishya kumbh you know you, that whole uh, doha where uh, kabir das has said that pupil is like a pot which the guru who is a kumhar is you know making that but he's kind of pushing it or giving it shape from outside by hurting it but inside it's putting that support and holding it you know so that's that's what we need to do with human beings you know you need to shape them up you need to be strict you need to show that outside but inside you have to hold them emotionally um, absolutely. very important absolutely what is your uh, you know you've been uh, you've been zarina at on the top of these things and you know you recently received an award would you like to say something about it you know last this weekend was when you received your award why don't you tell me something about it how sweet thanks for remembering that <laughs> yes i did actually uh, there was the women economic forum of 2020 and last year it was in slovenia i decided not to go i went off to london and scotland instead i didn't want to go for the award uh-huh. so this year maybe it was in my destiny so this year i got it uh, anyway and uh, they were holding the summit in bangalore and things changed because of covid so uh-huh. i did get the iconic women of the year uh, in leadership this year which is uh, it's uh, quite nice it's basically you know i haven't really worked ever towards recognition in whatever i i'm guessing that's something for a lot of us who come from backgrounds where or rooted backgrounds where you know we're not focusing on what we we'll get we're focusing on what we're giving so mm-hmm. i never really bothered so much but yes it's been it's been a nice two days and lovely experience i met a lot of people on the webinar and also discussed a whole entire you know uh, aspect of work from home because that's the topic i was speaking on for you know the summit as well so it was quite interesting thank you for asking that so yeah. <laughs> many many congratulations no it was on my mind and you know any learning from these two days which you would like to share you know of course um, yeah. 
learnings the fact that you know you are just a little speck in the universe you're sitting mm-hmm. out there and talking to women from all around the world and they're doing different things you're talking about the sciences diversity biology you know mm-hmm. molecular engineering you're talking about anxiety stress i don't know you're you're talking about so many things biodiversity and special needs and what not and then you realize that you're just a little speck and yes. the world has so much to offer and there's so much to learn out there and that's that's the learning i think i have even when i'm doing a podcast with somebody like you there's so much that i'm imbibing right now while you speak so it's going to stay with me it's just you know i'm just absorbing all that i'm getting like a sponge you know i'm just taking in all the information that you're giving me so it's just a learning process i love the learning process yes sir you know and i think it's very important you know because uh, when we are going through our lives mm-hmm. there are certain incidents like i told you when i went to nift yes or when i met sardar hussain and mm-hmm. you know the couple of others you know for example i was sitting in a remote village called jabua and there was this guy who was uh, making a dari and i was looking at him with very old guy and i was looking at him and i was like i see here you know putting so much effort and what is he earning so there are incidents i think which shape your life yeah and it's very important uh, for you to share it with other people because uh, you know something which you learned through hard experience of you know through time can be shared and if 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 you if you shared it with the right person it can really make a difference absolutely you know at that point of time so absolutely true and i completely second that thought and in fact uh, navila i'm feeling really bad because this has been such a wonderful conversation <laughs> and you have so much to share i i think we might just consider doing a you know continuation to oh. like <laughs> there are so many wonderful stories you've got and thank you or maybe at another time but today yes. for the last part in the last segment i have to ask you my signature question and that is what empowers you anavila so you know i've thought about this you know what actually keeps me going uh, mm-hmm. from one day to another and uh, the most important thing for me uh, i think the ability for us to make a social change uh, the ability to for me my heart breaks when i see somebody with skill with passion and with a real motivation to do something but lacking resources uh, and exposure and uh, you know means to achieve what they want to achieve and if we can be a catalyst there if we can be a catalyst and bring about uh, you know um, make our contribution to be able to move uh, those people into creating or fulfilling their dreams i think that motivates me a uh, dream of bringing about equality and social change that's my biggest biggest uh, motivator how lovely how lovely this has been so wonderful and thank you so much for your time you've been so easy to steer in this conversation and you've had so much to share i i am just really in awe of whatever you've spoken and lovely stories i'm sure our listeners would love the pearls of wisdom you've shared today and uh, i have to also mention that the rise of anavila should continue you know thank you so much one all the very best and thank you for your time and thank you for such uh, wonderful wisdom today anavila No thank you Zarina you know it's always nice to now this for me has been you know a great time to pause and look at my own journey you know otherwise mm-hmm. you don't you know step back and just go through what you've done where you've come and appreciate give you a little appreciation to your own self to say okay fine you know it's been a good journey and let's now move forward so it's it was a li- nice nice break for me as well thank you so much for inviting me for this thank you thank you If you liked this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IVM podcast on Twitter and Instagram. I hope you enjoyed that show. So another really fun week on the network. I don't know if you saw this, but Varun Thakur was on Advertising is Dead. That was a really, really fun episode. Besides that, we've had some great guests all over the place. We had Ram Madhwani on Cyrus Says. We had Saurav Mukherjee, a legend in the finance space. He was on Paisa Vesa. He and Anupam have quoted in a book, so definitely do check out that episode and go buy their book too. I mean, like that would be another great thing to do. Uncle Please Sit had a really, really cool episode with hosts of our other show, Mr. and Mrs. Binge Watch, Anirudh and Janice. They 
today we're talking about celebrity culture and how that's progressed for the last few years. And yeah, it's just been a really, really great week. One episode I do want to shout out, a couple of weeks ago, Pulia Bazi did an episode which was just amazing. They were talking about the uh, letters between Mahatma Gandhi and Rabindranath Tagore. Do check those out. Those are really good. And with that, hope to see you again next week. नमस्ते मैं हूं सौरभ चंद्रा और मैं प्रणय कोटिस्थाने जब महफिल खत्म होते होते दरवाजे के बाहर पुलिया के ऊपर हम दुनिया भर की जटिल समस्याओं को सॉल्व करने में लग जाते हैं तो हो जाती है पुलिया बाजी अब आजकल के अपार्टमेंट वालों ने तो कभी पुलिया देखी नहीं होगी पर आप फीलिंग तो समझ ही सकते हैं तो आइए शामिल हो जाइए हमारी पुलिया में जहाँ प्रणय और मैं एक से एक इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स की तह तक जाएंगे आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस बिटकॉइन पाकिस्तान मेडिकल एजुकेशन करेंसी क्राइसिस कभी हम दोनों के साथ और अक्सर स्पेशल एक्सपर्ट गेस्ट की कंपनी में सुनिए हमें आई की वेबसाइट ऐप या अपने फेवरेट पॉडकास्टिंग प्लेटफॉर्म आरोप हर दूसरे हफ्ते